Oh guys, what a ride! I do love the trilogy The Ark of a Sight by Nell Schusterman. This is the last one, the tall. And I just finished it and I'm still reeling from the ending. I'm still um, thinking about it and deciding, <laughs> you know, how it all fits with me. And uh, because I love how it ends, but it also it closes everything. But it also it's like an open ending in which you can begin thinking about what's going to happen to the different people and to different places. And yeah, I'm going to be very big with that because I don't want to make any kind of spoilers. But yeah, I mean. Uh, one of the things that I love about the trilogy and about the ending is that I, it's going to be a spoiler for you, okay? It's safe to watch. Um, but one of the things that I love is that I didn't know uh, where the author was going to go. Uh, what, what was he going to do with everything that he had been creating and how he was going to fix or to solve the different things that were between the sides and uh, what the thunder had um, was going to be like, I had thought that it was going to be like this evil artificial intelligence, I'm not going to say if I'm right or if I'm wrong, but I did love that I wasn't expecting, like, any of it <laughs> to go the way it does in this book, so yeah, look at my smile, I'm very happy uh, with the ending and even I'm still thinking about different parts of it, and yeah, it's amazing. Um, there's some reviews that say that they were unhappy because, um, there's going to be lots of new characters introduced in this book, they say, and lots of different places, and they wanted the book to remain uh, centered in, in Mid-America, like the previous ones. And I am like, really? Because um, all the characters that we find in this book, we are going to find new ones, obviously, but we're going to be following the main characters that we have known from the previous books. And there will be like <clears throat> some new additions, some new additions, that's true. But they fit very seamlessly with the story because the story is going to be expanding upon what we knew on the previous two books. If you remember the second book ending with the uh, destruction of Endura and lots of the sites uh, that we knew about died. So this book moves like I think it's three years um, into the future. So lots of things are going to be happening. And for me, it makes lots of sense because Goder. If you remember, he's like this evil mastermind. He wants to mold the world into what he wants it to be. He wants to have like this free killing license to do everything he wants. And he wants to kill people and wants to justify it. And he creates like, he's one of those crazy people that want to make sense with a lot of words. And you're th looking at them and you're thinking you're crazy man and you want to justify that you're a psycho. So we are going to be having him in a place of power no one can dispute his power because he has basically killed everyone who could. So he's like running the show, but he's not content about just running his local show. He's expanding worldwide and he's doing lots of things to affect the world. And I think that it's very good that we have different points of views on different parts of the world so that we can see whether or not people bow down to rule, go there and where they accept or not what he's saying and doing and how he's reacting to people who accept or reject him and for me it was amazing to see how someone can get power and be a son of a bitch. Um, Godard has been like a very interesting character to read about because uh, he's completely fuck up. <laughs> I don't know how to summarize it in, a, in a, any other way and yeah he's really evil he has his own uh, ways of thinking and trying to convince you that he's the one on the right side and I think that he's a very well-constructed villain in the way that he's bad but it's not bad per se I mean he really believes that he's doing good things and there is in this in this book he's going to be losing more and more of his stability so to say in some way so he's going to be going more into rampages, rampages because he's going to be feeling a lot of rage and a lot of things and he's going to be like acting like a crazy my man, my man. Uh, he's like this dictatorship <laughs> dictatorship and and he's not a dictatorship he's a dicta dictator and he's creating this dictatorship and everyone is kind of submitting to him out of fear and yeah I'm not going to say much more about him but it's amazing to see how 
who he feels like someone who has already existed or someone that, that can already come to be true. I mean, there's the yeah, power corrupts people, and there is people who use power to do all the nasty and evil things that they want to do. And I think that Goddard it's one of those characters. It, it, it makes you think about a lot of. I'm not going to name names, but. I think that humanity has had its fair share of people like Godard who want to have power to eradicate all these people that they don't that don't think like them, don't look like them, or that just want to disabuse them of their crazy thinking. So yeah. Uh, obviously we are going to be seeing our old friends, Citran, Rowan, Faraday, uh, the Thunderhead, and uh, Grayson, and I love how all the characters have been growing all this time, how far they have come from the first time that we saw them. Um, I'm thinking about the first time we saw Citra and we saw Rowan, how naive they were, how they thought that they could change the world and how they felt like they have their past to play. And we have characters here that they have done lots of things, they have had lots of things done to them and I love how consistent they are um, with how they have grown up um the personal evolution of, of them and there are times in which the author regals us with the glimpses inside their heads and you can really feel how they're thinking and how they're situating themselves in different places in different moments and for me they are very approachable characters in that way and I love them to bits. And yeah, yeah, I know I'm being very vague. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Let's say that this book is going to pick up where the second one left off. We're going to be um, <clears throat> following Goddard and his um, idea of molding the world to what he wants. And people are going to be... Yeah, I mean, if you are not with him, you are against him. And if you are going against him, you're going to die because he has lots of power and lots of resources to do everything he wants uh, to the people who rebel against him. So, yeah, it, uh, it seems like humanity is lost. All is lost. There is no hope. Um, the Thunderhead has gone silent. Everyone has been labeled on Savory, but, but, but Grayson. Uh, the Tonist, the religious, religious cult that we had in the previous book, is going to be growing a lot. And it's going to be, there's going to be different parts to it. There's going to be parts that have a very corrupt way of thinking and there's uh, parts of it that's going to be like I uh, have different religious beliefs and things that kind of make sense and uh, Grayson is going to be the tall it's going to be like a messiah that's going to be you know delivering the word of uh, you don't have to read the book to know what <laughs> yeah I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it but let's say that uh, Grayson is going to be as I say the tall and he's going to be like this messiah like figure and whether or not he wants to or it sits well with him, you will have to check out the book. And I absolutely love Grayson in this one. It was a very combined uh, about him in the second one, but in this one, he is an amazing character. And I love how he feels about the role that he has to fulfill and everything. Obviously, we are going to be following Citra. And I love how fresh she has gone. For me, she's been like the center point of the story along with the Thunderhead. And obviously Rowan is going to be here, but for me Rowan it's like he has grown a lot too. But for me he's like, he has kind of evolved less because uh, he has always been put in that place in which he is always seen as the killer. Or, <coughs> sorry, or as the responsible one for some kind of disgrace or another and he's always been tortured or he's always been in jail and he's always been prosecuted. You know, it's like he is always in the same place and... Uh, He's an amazing character and I will have like to see more room for growth for him. And yes, it was, as I say, it's amazing. And I love all the new sides that we are going to be finding in this book. And also, um, there's going to be a character that for me has a stall in the show. Uh, Gender Free Jerry. They are amazing. I love how much they bring to the book. I love how they think, how they feel and how they act. And for me, they have been like the greatest character, and now we need a spin off about them. Um, something before they meet uh, with the people in this book, and maybe something after, if they survive, which I'm not telling. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this book has been amazing. I'm very happy with the conclusion, how it ends. I'm still thinking about it because, as I say, it closes off all the narratives, all the different points of views, all the characters have their closure, but it also lets you room. 
uh, to think it's kind of a uh, an open ending where you can think about what's going to happen with the characters that make it. And yeah, I did love this trilogy. So yeah, pick it up because it's amazing. Thanks for watching. Bye.